Here we are, December 14th, 2021, um, in week three of Advent. Um, this week's theme is joy. Scripture today is Nehemiah 8, verse 10. Uh, yeah, I'm going to read the whole text. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet wine and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. God, I pray that you're with us in this time of study and this time of interpretation. In the name of your son, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. One could easily say, hey, man, it was easy to find a text that had joy in it and you pulled it out. Um, facts. However, as I did further research and further study, one, I didn't know that the text was in Nehemiah. I did, but it wasn't like readily on my brain. Um, it's interesting because the scene is set. Ezra is leading the people. Um, the recent exiles of returns from exile. Um, with the team of ministers on his left and his right. And he's standing there and he opens the book of the law, or the, book of the, law or the Bible, or in that case would have been parts of the Old Testament. And um, the folks stand. Um, and they're grieving and they're crying. Ezra's telling them not to grieve and not to cry. And that they'll be okay. This text cannot be appreciated without further background. So it's found in the book of Nehemiah. Um, Ezra and Nehemiah, both Old Testament books, um, they are part of the story um, from Genesis up through the middle part of the um, Old Testament. And the individuals who are there are mourning and grieving because they're receiving God again. Um, and they're feeling bad because they're hearing how much God loves them. They're hearing that in spite of their sins, God is still there for them. They're hearing that there's no wrong that they could do to separate them from the love which is in God and which we will find later in Christ Jesus. Um, they're coming back from exile from this guy. If you read Bible, you're going to hear his name often. King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, in E B U C H A D N E Z Z A R. King Nebuchadnezzar. He is mentioned in 2 Kings. He's mentioned in 2 Chronicles. He's mentioned even in the book of Daniel, which is further in um, the Old Testament. Um, military strength, um, conquest, I mean, conquistador, um, taking over um, different lands and different places. Um, his seat, if you will, was in Babylon, which is modern day Iraq. Uh, like, yeah. So he came through when he took the exiles from, or the, the people from Judah and, you know, ruled them, if you will. Um, the interesting part here is that they're returning from exile in the book of Ezra and in the book of Nehemiah. And a theme of both books is God's restoration. Um, so it's interesting now to find that I've chosen this text for, was giving simplistic background, um, but to find this, to use this text in Advent, right? Joy, happy, birth of Christ, like newness, appreciation. Like how is this text running relating to me and, and where I am? How? How? So it relates because the Lord is, Ezra is able to tell them through the word of the Lord, hey, don't grieve. Hey, don't be depressed. Hey, don't cry. Get up, wipe yourself off. The subheading in this part of the text is this day is holy, right? God is able to, and willing to restore you. You don't have to stay in what you've done. You don't have to stay in where you've been. You don't have to stay in that hurt and that pain and that disappointment and whatever else may be going through your life. You don't have to stay in that place. Man, that's amazing. That's what we want to hear. In the midst of this Advent season, in the midst of this life change, in the midst of this waiting for the second coming, um, waiting for a new, waiting for a birth, waiting for something that I don't have at the moment. It's great to know that the mistakes I've made in my life are not enough to take me out. That what I've done right or wrong 
God is not going to judge me by and my life is not done because of that. I have another opportunity. And when I realize that God is here to restore me, when I realize that God wants to birth something in me through what I've gone through, I now have the joy of the Lord. And I still I now know that the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's not how much I can bench press. It's not how fast I can run and how far I can run. The joy of the Lord is literally my strength. The joy of the Lord literally is that because the joy of the Lord is going to pull me through whatever it is that I've gone through. The joy of the Lord is going to pull me through whatever it is that I faced. Um, that heartbreak, um, that family member that told me that I wasn't good enough, um, that family member that's not there, um, that divorce that took place, um, that failed relationship, um, that job that didn't work out, my GPA that's not where I want it to be, um, my financial situation is not where I want, um, I, I, I'm not full or, 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 or loving of myself, whatever it may be in the season of my life. I know what mine is, but I don't know what yours is. I'm able to know that God is willing to restore me and bring joy. And God knows what I've done. God knew that the exiles had started worshiping other things and not God. Hence why God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come in and do what Nebuchadnezzar did because they had lost their strength and their hope and their connection to God. That's not what this is about. It's not, oh, I'm never going to be, I'm never going to overcome. No, this is, hey, I know what you've done. Let it go. On your road to restoration, I'm there. And when you get there, whenever that there is, I'm there to give you what you need. And what you need is more of me. Not more titles, not more status, not more uh, uh, appreciate. What you need is more me. And getting to that space and getting to that place and understanding that that more me is able. That more me is willing. Joy. To see the joy of the Lord in the midst of all of what I stand in. In the midst of all that's in front of me. The joy of the Lord. And not just words, not just a song. It's been redone several times. But to get it in my spirit in this Advent season, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Not happiness. No, 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 no. Not, not happiness because it's based on things that are happening. But the joy that when things are all over the place, when it did not work out the way you thought it was supposed to, the joy of the Lord is still my strength. When I put more into it than I probably should have, the joy of the Lord is still my strength. Hey, look, I know you're holding on to it. You're trying to get out of it. You don't understand why this is happening to you. A dear friend of mine told me here recently that nature is amazing and allowing us to see how to let things go. Between September 22nd and arguably December 21st, um, there's a season called autumn or fall. And in that season, we see um, nature start to die and fall. And in that season, we're reminded of how beautiful nature is in death. And we're ushered into winter, December 22nd through about March 31st, 21st, sorry. And in that season of winter, we see things completely die. Trees are falling off the trees. Um, animals don't come out. They go away. It's desolate. Oh, but then there's a spring. Oh, but things start to grow in those seasons of death. But I have to let something go in order to get to that place. God can't restore me if I'm still hanging on to what needs to die. Let it die. In a recent moment in my life and feeling isolated, feeling like everybody's just left me with the exception of my child. I was walking one morning and all I heard was the spirit say, I, I, I didn't leave you. In that moment, I was like, yo, whatever. I still want blah. I still want this. I still want that. The spirit said, I haven't left you. The trouble happens when I leave you. 
I don't have to force God to love me. I don't have to force God to accept me. God's acceptance and God's love of me doesn't change based on the weather, based on somebody else that came back, based on what somebody else looks like, based on a conversation that I may have or may not have had or may or may not have meant to offend you months ago. God doesn't do that. God's not going to remind me of my faults. God's going to love me through them. On your road to restoration, whatever you are restoring, whatever you are working on, because we all are working on something, regardless if we share it or not, regardless of what you're working on and what you're working through, on your road to restoration, allow God to find you. Allow God to be a crash course in what you're doing. And allow yourself to stay there and to know that your strength is just like Ezra's words in Nehemiah 8 verse 10. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Right then and there, in the midst of what you're faced with, in the midst of what you are dealing with, allow God, allow God, allow God to be the joy of your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In this Advent season, as I move towards the birth of Christ, know that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Um, I continue to encourage you, um, if you have not been reading, to start reading Luke. Uh, 24 days in Luke is amazing um, because leading up to uh, Christmas Eve, it takes you through the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection. Lord and I say the Lord and Savior, Jesus. Um, I encourage you to start reading. Today's the 14th, so you can pick up uh, 14th, you can pick them on the 15th, and you can get back to the other ones. It takes you in an in-depth series of who Jesus is, who Jesus was, and who Jesus will be. Um, leading up to his the day we celebrate his birth. So I encourage you to join in reading Luke, whatever version that fits you best. 24 days in Luke. Um, Advent week three, joy. Nehemiah 8, verse 10. The joy of the Lord is my strength.